Coming up on Business Incorporated. South Africa bought its 6 billion rand for wind and solar energy. And Bank of Ghana issues new guidelines for domestic card payments. Bank of Cairo's first half profit climbs 7%. Hello, welcome to the program. I'm Ladi Williams. Uh, let's uh, kick off with markets now. Uh, for a second consecutive day, Nigeria's equities market was trading negative. And intraday down 0.05%. While GSE of South Africa uh, was positive, up 0.53%. EGX30 of Egypt was negative, shedding 0.16%. While Kenya lost even more at the close of trading uh, session on Monday. And mixed sentiment recorded at intraday in the Middle East. Abu Dhabi was flat, while Dubai uh, gained 0.11%. Saudi Arabia uh, gained uh, marginally, while uh, Qatar lost 0.13%. And over to Europe now. Inflation across the Eurozone has surged to its highest level in a decade as rising costs of energy, goods and uh, services hit households uh, let's uh, talk to Ashtosh Pandey now, live in Frank Frankfurt. Uh, hello, Ashtosh. Uh, the Eurozone inflation has climbed to a, a fresh multi-year high of uh, 3%. What does that mean for uh, the bloc's uh, ultra-loose monetary policy? Certain, uh, certainly, it puts a lot of spotlight on that, and there's going to be more chatter about uh, phasing out of that uh, monetary policy, maybe, uh, and discussions could start as early as this month. Uh, uh, so we have already heard from a governing council member, the central banker from uh, Austria, saying that the, the, it's the right time to now start discussing about uh, phasing out some of that uh, easy monetary policy, or phasing out some of the bond purchases. Uh, but uh, overall, I think the, 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 they are going to stick to this ultra loose monetary policy for now and they are going to stick to the narrative that it, inflation is transitory uh, uh, and, and it's been driven by largely temporary factors like energy prices. We all know that uh, oil prices had gone down drastically last year and, and that's the reason why the, they look, uh, the prices, uh, when you compare them with last year, they look higher. So that's going to be then the supply chain uh, disruptions. Uh, that's again a temporary factor as the economy normalizes uh, bankers, the policy Policymakers do believe that that's uh, going to uh, uh, that factor is also going to disappear sooner rather than later. So all these uh, factors they are going to stick to. They are going to uh, stick to that transitory camp for now. It looks like. Right. So uh, China came out with uh, PMI data for August, and they don't look uh, pretty. How are investors in Frankfurt digesting it? Yeah, yeah, for them also, it was quite a disappointing uh, set of data that came out of China this morning. Uh, uh, services sector contracting in August, that's a big, uh, big uh, uh, disappointment. Uh, uh, the, uh, and that's largely because of spread of the Delta variant and the strict lockdown uh, restrictions that followed. Uh, uh, but uh, the more disappointing of the figure was uh, the manufacturing data. The, although it just managed to serve, uh, uh, stave off a contraction just coming in, at 50.1, uh, but it just shows that the manufacturing sector is actually struggling to change gears, and it has been so far now a few months now, uh, and, and, and that's a cause of worry as far as the other economies are concerned, depending on how reliant they are on the Chinese economy. All right, and the uh, EU has voted to reimpose restrictions on non-essential travel uh, from the U.S. amid rising Delta variant cases. Uh, that must have come as a, a blow to the, the tourism sector. Oh, absolutely, yes. Uh, and, and there's been chat around this for quite some time. Uh, and we've seen the shares, uh, uh, actually, shares of all the airline companies, they've been un underperforming over the past few sessions, and it was no different today. So we, it, it is a, a disappointment. That's what the, uh, the, the trade, uh, uh, the body, the, 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 the airline body here said that it's quite a disappointment. And it, the reasoning that they give is that there are quite a high proportion, uh, like, number of 
of people uh, in the U.S. and in, in Europe who've been vaccinated or have the, they've recovered from coronavirus. So it, such restriction does not really make sense. So that's what the argument is. But overall, it's quite a blow for uh, the airline industry, especially because they depend so much uh, on uh, this transatlantic route. It's a lucrative one, especially the, the flagship carriers like Air France, Lufthansa, British Airways. For them, it's, it's quite a lucrative uh, route. And if you, if, you, if you talk about the budget airlines, for them, uh, things are going just fine uh, right now because uh, uh, they're, they're just operating within Europe and here you can just uh, get on a plane using your uh, uh, COVID pass, uh, uh, the pass passport that uh, uh, the European Union has introduced. So it's, fed, uh, it's simpler here, but uh, for the long haul uh, operators, it's going to be challenging. Yeah, I always expect the uh, markets to react. All right, Ashtos Pandey, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, now let's uh, see what's uh, happening in the UK with uh, Juliana. Great to have you, Juliana. Uh, UK homeowners uh, made a rare Net payment of mortgage debt in July, about £1.4 billion. And uh, what's more, it's actually more than they actually borrowed. Hello, Juliana. Uh, just showing, it goes to show just how much money um, uh, people have saved over the past uh, few months when uh, their consumer habits have been all over the place uh, because of COVID-19. This data released earlier today by the Bank of England does show for, for the second time in just a decade, homeowners uh, paid uh, more than what was owed in their property. This isn't for the month of July. This is for the month of June, just at a time uh, where when the government stamp duty holiday uh, was coming uh, to an end. So 1.4 billion pounds more was paid on mortgages because, as I said, a lot of people had a lot more in their coffers to spend. Now, separate data released by the Bank of England uh, for July does show that uh, mortgage um, offers uh, fell, fell to about £72,000. This is still above uh, the pre-pandemic numbers, but it does show that the housing market is uh, beginning to shift a little. It has been uh, one of the successes from the pandemic. It was one of the first uh, sectors to be given the green light to open uh, back in the summer of 2020. And because of a lot of these tax breaks and there was the new kind of um, generation uh, rent has now turned into generation by lots of people that wouldn't necessarily have been able to get on the housing ladder have been able to do so. But this is all uh, starting to come to an end, especially tomorrow when the furlough scheme uh, comes to an end. So we are starting to see it um, uh, change a little. But the fact that uh, people have paid much more uh, than what was owed is uh, certainly a good thing for the Bank of England. Yeah, quite a good thing there. Uh, let's uh, look at some metals now. Price of aluminum has hit a 10-year high in London uh, this morning. W what's causing this rally? Yeah, well, we are facing a climate emergency, aren't we? Uh, that's uh, that's the, the geopolitical story of the moment, probably, um, of uh, the decade. And China is right at the heart of this. So in particular regions within Xinjiang, um, they have asked uh, smelter um, construction um, sites to reduce the amount <coughs> of smelting uh, they're doing. Of course, um, aluminium is a main component of that. So we are starting to see uh, some um, reactions in the London Metal Exchange this morning. Uh, the price of aluminium soared by like 2.97%. It also soared on the Shanghai Metal Exchange as well. But uh, yeah, we are going to start seeing more and more of this um, because the world is changing, not only the way it does business, but it does uh, want to be uh, much more cleaner and leaner. Um, so yes, that was uh, the reason why aluminium soared to, a, I believe, a three-year high earlier today. Right. Cleaner and leaner. Right. So uh, how's the market uh, looking this intraday? Oh, yeah, it was a long bank holiday weekend, uh, just to remind you. Um, so oh, yeah. the FTSE started off trading a little bit muted, and we're not expecting uh, many corporate updates uh, today. The FTSE all shares started in the red. It's pretty much in the red at intraday. It's down 0.27%. The FTSE 100 also down by 0.39%. Though the FTSE 250 is up by 0.29%. In the currencies market, the British pound is up on the US dollar by 0.04%. Down, though, on the euro by 0.22% and up on the Japanese yen at intraday by 0.07%, laddie. All right, Juliana, always great to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thank you.
And uh, moving on now, shares in Asia Pacific were mixed today as uh, data showed slowing Chinese factory activity growth in August. Mainland China, the Shanghai Composite, uh, rose 0.45% to close at 3,543.94 points, while the Shenzhen Composite uh, shared 0.65% on the day uh, to 14,328 points. China's factory activity grew at a slower pace in August as compared with the a previous month, the official Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index for August uh, came in at 50.1 against July's reading of uh, 50.4. Meanwhile, the official Non-Manufacturing PMI for August came in at 47.5, its lowest reading since the height of the pandemic in early 2020. Uh, Hong Kong listed uh, shares in, of Tencent and uh, NetEase were mixed amid regulatory fears. Tencent recovered from an earlier uh, losses to rise 3.31% on Tuesday, while NetEase dropped 2.07%. In Japan, the Nikkei 225 rose 1.08% to close at 28,089 points. While the Topics Index advanced 0.54%, to finish the trading day at 1,960.7 uh, points. South Korea's Kospi jumped 1.75% to close at 3,199 points. Elsewhere, the S&P ASX 200 in Australia uh, edged up 0.41%. MSCI's broadest index of Asia-Pacific shares outside Japan also rose 1.34%. Over to the U.S. now. Stock futures rose in early trade as the S&P 500 looks uh, uh, to wrap up its seventh straight month of gains at a record high. Futures on the Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 77 points. Both uh, S&P 500 futures and NASDAQ 100 futures traded higher uh, by about 0.2%. The S&P 500 notched its 53rd record close of 2021 on Monday. Uh, Tuesday marks the last trading day of August, and major averages are poised to post solid gains for the period. The S&P 500 is up 3% this month, while the tech-heavy uh, Nasdaq composite has climbed 4%. On pace to post its third winning month in a row, uh, the blue-chip Dow is up uh, more a more modest 1.3%. Uh, and over to West Africa now. The Bank of Ghana has issued guidelines for domestic processing of payment uh, card transactions with uh, uh, payment cards in the country. These guidelines cover the domestic processing of payment cards uh, transactions with, uh, uh, issued in Ghana and licensing of card processing entities. So now we have... Uh, uh, to shed more light on these guidelines, we have uh, George Wiafe, business editor at Joy TV Ghana. Great to have you, George. Hello, George. Hello, George. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right, uh, George, <laughs> tell us about these uh, new guidelines. So what the regulator is trying to um, do here is that in the past, we've had some of these cards being processed outside and it comes to the whole uh, FX charges and the other things as well. So this is more of a, a gradual directive where these cards will be processed here locally in Ghana. And when the clearance happen here in Ghana, it will save some time. It will also fast track the timing, uh, working on uh, client consents. And therefore they believe that going for a or the new to consumers and financial institutions. So we are first starting with those cards that are processed here or done here locally in Ghana before they move to the likes of the Visa and the MasterCards where the plan is that all of them will have their parents and settlement done here in Ghana. That would again reduce the turnaround time in dealing with complaints of consumers and also uh, save some effects uh, uh, for the country because of the instituted cost when these things have to be cleared outside Ghana. All right, but how would this impact, you know, payment card processing and uh, usage in Ghana? Of course, you, we still have a larger chunk of the population that have not signed up to these cards. So if that this plan is sold to them that, listen, Within 24 hours, if you have concerns about issues about your card, it can be addressed for you if it's done locally and it won't take 48 hours and all the rest. That could be a good selling proposition to most of these persons who are outside the banking system. Also, it's believed that if these things are processed quite early, it will deal with uh, delays that are seated with these things that are making it difficult sometimes to encourage more institutions to sign up to it. So 
One, it would it would the major thing is about making some savings on FX and also the turnaround time if these things are done locally. As we speak right now, most of these foreign cars do their clearance and settlements outside the country. And they believe that it is not good for us security-wise and all the rest, even though we have some of these uh, payment cards that are doing their clearance and processing here in Ghana. So he believes that it would save the country some efforts, turn around time for most of these consumers and even the institutions as well. And that should be a unique selling position uh, for those who are outside the banking system to bring them in as well. Okay. All right, uh, George, we have a business editor at Joy TV Ghana. Thank you so much for uh, coming on the program. Thank you. All right, so uh, after the break, uh, commodities market update is next. This is Business Incorporated. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching Business Incorporated live on Channels Television. Over to a commodities market update now. We're discussing liquefied petroleum gas, also known as cooking gas. Uh, it's a totally deregulated product. And as a result of the deregulation, prices are reflective of market trends. Current price moved from 4,900 naira as of June to 6,000 naira as of August 2021, up by 33% against an inflation factor of 17.38%. Uh, to discuss uh, this now and the impact of this uh, price, like we have uh, Temi Tokwe Fatuba, a research analyst at Financial uh, Derivatives Company. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, so uh, recently there was a new tax levy imposed by the federal government coupled with an increase uh, in the global price of LPG. This has led to an increase in price of uh, cooking gas. How sustainable is this uh, uh, price uh, increase in Nigeria? Um, in the short term, we would say it's not sustainable because we are, at a, we, are, we are now at a position where we're trying to get more people to abandon fossil fuels and also um, use more clean energy, which in this case is the liquefied gas. But with these new facts imposed by the federal government through the Federal Inland Revenue Service and the Ministry of Finance, as also would also have an effect of raising gas prices, which is what we're seeing. Because as of June, we had gas prices were at 4,200 naira. Now we are having it at 6,000 naira. As of December last year, it was 3,200 naira. And there, there are also rumors from the marketers that this could go up to 10,000 naira by December. And this is attributed to the fact that the NLNG, which is the Nigerian liquefied natural um, gas, cannot meet the demand. There's a standard quota they have, which is about 350,000 metric tons. And due to that, in the marketers need to import the shortfall. And now the um, consumption domestically is about 1.2 million. And of course, they need to make up for that shortfall. And also, we are also not helped by the fact that the dollar um, keeps, um, keeps appreciating against the Naira. And this has costs. And um, so when marketers import, they need to pass this cost to consumers. And that's a situation where we're trying to now like try to get people to like embrace um, clean energy. This is now becoming a challenge because you now have restaurants, hotels who are utilizing gas, now utilizing more of trying to go back to what we're trying to run away from, which is the fossil fuels, such as kerosene, charcoal, and um, firewood and all that. Uh, so th that would actually also stoke inflation, I guess. Definitely. All and, right. So, but yeah. in the long term, in the long term, the solution to this will be the PI Act, which now serves to like make the industry more attractive and will bring in more investors who will now invest in the gas production in the country. And by investing in gas production, we'll be able to meet the demand because currently supply trumps demand trumps supply at the moment. All right, so what will happen now to, you know, Nigerians that can't, uh, you know, afford this? What, what's the alternative now? The alternative? The alternative for now will be to try and, like, look for ways. Maybe the marketers can look for ways to ensure that they don't pass too much of these costs to the consumers. Because to even get the consumers to embrace to embrace this cleaner energy was a, was a challenge. But more and more people are embracing the clean energy. After all, it's more convenient when you cook with these fossil fuels, your pots tend to be black. The, um, the attendant health effects, too, are also um, another challenge, basically. I mean, we might see some more uh, moves to charcoal and uh, other dirtier uh, Yes, because forms. now people who have already embraced these, um, embraced the LPG, may now be tempted to move back. 
because now, of course, we all know what's happening in the country. Disposable income has reduced. And of course, people tend to like look for cheaper alternatives, which is what's happening, basically. Okay. So, so there's a global transition now from fossil fuel to cleaner energy based on the uh, Paris Climate Accord. The, the world is moving towards clean energy, uh, which is a threat to, you know, fossil uh, fuels. How does this uh, transition, you know, affect the Nigerian economy, you know, considering that LPG is actually a cleaner uh, form of energy? Okay, um, currently, um, Nigeria, um, carbon emissions in Nigeria, 85% of carbon emissions in Nigeria are gotten, are, um, fossil fuels are responsible for 85% of carbon emissions in Nigeria. And of course, if we look at the Niger Delta, the government has spent about $360 million so far just to clean the environment. And so what this cleaner energy has in effect is that it helps the health, um, because people are able to use gas now, it's going to improve the health because when you're using fossil fuels, you're, we all know the attendant health risks that fossil fuels pose, such as um, heart, it, it, it um, causes asthma, it causes lung cancer, it causes um, ischemic heart problems. So, you know, a healthy population is a population where the human capital is well developed, where people have the little disposable income people have, people can spend it on buying goods and services, which helps improve our GDP. Instead of now buying, instead of using the little resources you have, to now treat your, to now be treating cancer, treating different um, diseases, which of course is going to have an effect on the economy as a whole. All right. So, what's your outlook for uh, the price of LPG going forward? Um, the price for the outlook going forward, um, the PI Act, which was just passed by President Buhari, is um, a positive step in the right direction because this act is going to help um, people who want investors. It's going to be attractive for investors who would come into the system and would be willing to invest because they're going to have tax holidays. They're going to have incentives for them to be able to invest in the gas sector. So you can, have, you can imagine a, an investor that comes and has a five-year tax holiday. That's a major incentive. And it removes all the bureaucracies with um, attaining licenses to be able to operate in the midstream sector. So if the PI Act is implemented, is implemented appropriately, Obviously, this will solve our issues in terms of cleaner energy on the long run. All right. Uh, we'll have to leave it there now. Timmy Tokwe Fatuba, research analyst with Financial uh, Derivatives Company. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. All right. Uh, moving on now. South Africa's energy supplier, Eskom, is considering spending 160, uh, 106 billion rand on uh, wind and solar energy. ASCOM plans to move away from coal-fired power and uh, take advantage of the country's abundant uh, wind and solar resources and uh, envisages uh, spending $61.7 billion on wind and power and $44.25 billion uh, rand on solar energy by the end of the decade. ASCOM's plans, though, have been you know, publicly opposed by the Minister of Energy, uh, who says such a transition could eliminate uh, thousands of uh, coal-dependent jobs. And uh, Sun International, the hotel and gaming group, is recovering as shown by results for the six months uh, to end uh, June 2021 through the group. Uh, it says it's still way below uh, the normal range. Revenue increased by 62% to just below 4 billion rand in that time, uh, compared with 2.48 billion rand in 2020. The overall revenue is still lower than the 5.5 billion rand in the first half of 2019. The hotel industry is uh, one of the most affected industries by the COVID-19 pandemic and the subsequent lockdown regulations uh, uh, which came uh, with the pandemic. And Bank of Cairo, Egypt's third largest public state lender, reported a 7% year-on-year growth in net profit for the first half of the year. According to the BDC's uh, standalone financial statements, the bank made first half net profit worth 1.8 billion Egyptian pounds from 1.7 billion uh, Egyptian pounds in the same period last year. Uh, growth was driven mainly by net interest income, which uh, rose to more than 5 billion pounds, uh, Egyptian pounds, from 4.9 uh, billion pounds in the first half of 2020, marking a 3% annual rise. Uh, net income from fees and commissions also increased by approximately 18% to 886 uh, million uh, Egyptian pounds, from 754 million pounds last year. Banks' operating income was 6.1 billion Egyptian pounds in the first half, 4% 4 up uh, from 5.9 billion pounds in the uh, comparable period last year. Customers' deposits also surged 10% to 178 
billion Egyptian pounds at the end of June buoyed uh, the bank's offering of diversified products at competitive interest rates. And Kenya Roads Board will disburse uh, 55 billion shillings towards maintenance of uh, national road network coverage in the country for the financial year 2021-2022. The board stated that the money will be distributed to the various road agencies according to the KRB Act No. 7 of 1999. The road agencies are Kenya National Highway Authority, Kenya Urban Roads Authority, and Kenya Rural Roads Authority, and Kenya Wild Service. And that's it on Business Incorporated. Thank you for watching. I'm Laddie Williams. Bye for now.